Hello everyone, thank you for the opportunity to bring you up to speed regarding this plan of putting an airport in the heart of the Tagus estuary. Very much what we intend is that the Tagus estuary keeps being an international bird port rather than hosting an airport. And uh, I have to credit Mo on this term, um, but that's something that uh, I think we really should um, work towards. This image here shows a flock of black-tailed godwits. It was estimated that 70,000 were present in the rice fields in this day. Um, the Tagus rice fields are very much a key stopover area for godwits traveling from West Africa to their breeding areas in Central and Northern Europe. Um, and this is only one of the many species that occurs in the Tagus estuary. Indeed, the Tagus estuary sits very close to the Portuguese capital of Lisbon, or rather Lisbon sits very close to the Tagus estuary. It's the largest and most important wetland in Portugal. It has diverse habitats, such as intertidal areas, but also salt marshes, and also man-made habitats, such as salt pans and rice fields, all of which are extensively used by shorebirds. It holds uh, about 200 waterbirds in winter. Um, during migration period, this number is much higher. It goes up to about 300,000. Because of this, it is protected by national law, but also at the European level as a special protection area and is uh, part of international agreements and designations, such as Ramsar Convention, but also designated by BirdLife and as, as an important bird and biodiversity area. The Tagus estuary is uh, very much important for shorebirds, which find in, in the intertidal areas prime feeding habitats where they find their food and then dotted across the estuary and across. Um, these intertidal areas are also important high tide roosts where these waders concentrate during high tide. They obviously uh, have quite different ecological functions, um, being both of them quite important for these birds, both inside and outside the protected area. Now the location of this airport is in one of the peninsulas of the Tagus estuary, the Montijo Peninsula, and um, this infrastructure will be located where the airplane icon is. It um, barely overlaps on the ground with the special protection area, but really the issue is when these aircrafts are taking off and landing, which will do at very low, flying at very low altitudes over intertidal areas, but also roost sites. In the environmental impact assessment study, it was only considered relevant um, impacts on birds when the noise created by air aircrafts is above 65 decibel. But in fact, at this level of noise, 50% of the birds show altered behaviors. And this means they can be flying out of the area impacted by the noise, by this noise level, but also um, have alarm calls or um, vigilant behavior. Now it's also, it's also been shown, actually in the same study, that at 55 decibel, uh, about 8% of birds are already showing altered behaviors. And for me, this is quite important when it takes place inside the protected area but at the moment it's completely disregarded. About 20% of the intertidal habitat in the protected area will be impacted at the 65 decibel level. And it's also striking to me that this means that in the whole of the estuary, about 50% of these prime foraging habitats will be impacted. Um, so in sum, there's just not enough intertidal area available to compensate for the impacts that are predicted from this uh, infrastructure. Over the last year, we've been um, undertaking this battle, trying to um, make the Portuguese government realize of the impacts that will be uh, posed upon birds, um, particularly shorebirds and other water birds. And um, uh, in a recent publication, uh, we've highlighted this um, in weather study, very journal, I must say. Um, and more recently in science, we've also been able to um, tackle this issue and raise awareness internationally 
uh, which worked quite well. At the moment, we have a court case ongoing in Portugal, which was submitted by the Portuguese BirdLife partner SPEA, and it's backed up by another six environmental NGOs. And for this court case, it would be very important to have a document outlining the weather study group's position uh, in, with regards of these plans. Hopefully, we'll be voting on that uh, after this presentation. But also, at the same time, we are developing a bit of research uh, at the moment, specifically reviewing data on the connectivity of the Tagus estuary. And I'll end my presentation with a call for action regarding this. So, this is very much the situation at the moment. Uh, for those of you that haven't had the time to read the draft statement, it pretty much uh, contains what I've just told you. Um, and hopefully, we will then have, after this vote, a declaration of the International Weather Study Group that can feed into the court case and likely into other cases which are being reviewed by different uh, agreements, international agreements and conventions of which Portugal is signatory. We are, uh, as I said, also trying to outline very clearly the international connectivity of the Tagus, uh, which is established by waders. And Moverhoven has already produced uh, a first, a very initial version of a map where we show the links uh, between the Tagus with a red dot and uh, other countries and sites across the flyway. If you have data, we would uh, very much like to ask you for it. And Mo has prepared very simple three questions. Uh, first of all, do you have data on a wader? Uh, did it ever use a Tagus estuary? And did it also occur outside Portugal? So, therefore, establishing the connectivity between the Tagus and elsewhere. If you say yes to all three of these questions, we would very much like to add your data to our map. Um, this can be resightings uh, based on colorings, but also geolocated tracks, GPS or satellite tracking will not be the first. And if you do have this data and are happy to contribute, please email Mo. And also, um, if you don't have time to get this email from here, I'm sure you'll find it in the, in the program uh, online of this conference. And that's it for me. I would also thank everyone that has been backing up this uh, battle and supporting in different ways. And also to Josh Nightingale, which uh, made the earlier maps that I've presented and to all that have been supporting it. Thank you very much.